بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم آج کا لیکچر اس دعا کے ساتھ شروع کرتے ہیں خدا من مطال تمام عالم بشریت عالم انسانیت کو حالیہ وبا کے خطرات سے محفوظ فرمائے اور ہم سب کے لیے آسانیاں عطا فرمائے ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ایز یو نو وی آر اسٹڈنگ اباؤٹ دا ریڈیو نیوکلیائڈ ڈیکے پروسیس اینڈ ان دس ریگارڈ وی آر ٹو ڈے اسٹڈنگ پارٹ تھری لیکچر ان پریویس لیکچر وی اسٹڈیڈ دا الفا پارٹیکل ڈیکے پروسیس اینڈ بیٹا ڈیکے پروسیس الفا ڈیکے پروسیس carried out in the nucleides having more than 82 atomic number and they are much heavier nucleus due to heavier number of uh, nucleons inside the nucleus they are remain unable to maintain its stability and spontaneously are some after passage of uh, its half life they undergo alpha emission process and to get the stable position and also we studied uh, what kind of applications of uh, alpha particles are there in nuclear medicine field in uh, particularly health field so in this regard we also studied about the beta decay process that actually proceeded in the nuclear having uh, neutron rich nucleides in order to reduce uh, the neutron number and to get uh, the ratio between proton and neutron which is uh, responsible for stable nucleides the neutron undergo disintegration process as a result of this process proton along with the beta radiation uh, produced so we studied about that the beta radiation a comp- carried huge amount of energy however the difference of energy between uh, beta particle as well as uh, the parent nuclei it is uh, compensated with the help of uh, a photon of energy that is uh, known as anti neutrino so there is a decay equation we have also studied in uh, this this process the proton number increased in a daughter nucleoid by one unit but uh, the atomic mass of uh, the daughter nucleoid remain same as uh, in parent atomic nucleoid so other is uh, the emission of beta uh, particle and along with the anti neutrino particle emission so this is an example of uh, the uh, beta decay process so here should be eight like in previous lecture i also mentioned there is uh, some missing okay so this is uh, another example of uh, beta decay process we also have studied there in last lecture okay there are some other examples that we studied all these uh, nucleides undergo beta decay processes and uh, these uh, newly formed uh, daughter nucleoid uh, still in its excited state so they undergo some uh, gamma ray emission uh, process decay process and uh, become stable however some other important uh, parameters that associated with the beta decay process is that when beta particle emitted by the radio nucleoid can produce what is called um, starling by interaction with the surrounding medium so electron passing through matter are decelerated in the columbic field of atomic nuclei and as a result the loss in electron energy appears as continuous x rays so this effect is called from storming effect in which x rays are produced so what actually the process what actually the uh, procedure in which uh, such type of energy such type of radiations are emitted by the passage of uh, beta radiation through the atomic uh, environment 
so it is explained by this diagram okay let's consider this nucleus actually this beta particle uh, or uh, electron actually emitted from the nucleus of uh, other nucleide so when it passes through the electronic environment of uh, uh, surrounding uh, atoms so this is decelerated why this is decelerated because you know there is uh, a columbic repulsion between this is also electron these are also electron so there is a columbic repulsion due to this repulsion it uh, loses its uh, path as well as uh, the energy its uh, speed as a as its speed reduces due to this reason and the kinetic energy decreases and rest of the difference of the kinetic energy liberated as a, a x-rays emission bremsstrahlung x-rays emission so this process is called bremsstrahlung um, procedure or process and the rays emitted through this process is called x-rays emission so as a whole these ray, x-rays are known as bremsstrahlung radiations or bremsstrahlung x-rays radiations so in this regard the energy is uh, lost by the emitted beta particle by deceleration process so due to this reason and this is called bremsstrahlung x-rays because the, in it the energy is reduced by of the beta particle and beta particle loses its energy as a form of x radiations x-rays are called bremsstrahlung uh, and are used in radiographic procedures so the probability of producing bremsstrahlung increases with increase electron energy and increasing atomic number of the medium yes this is very important the probability of uh, producing bremsstrahlung increases with increasing electron energy if an electron have very small amount small energy so it it liberates some amount of energy as in the form of bremsstrahlung radiation so what happen the liberated energy is with much less energy photons due to this reason that would not be fall into the x rays uh, spectrum of uh, radiation so due to this uh, this reason if the electron or beta particle that is actually emitted from the nucleus as a result of uh, neutron disintegration if it has greater amount of energy in it so by the deceleration process through the external environment of atomic nuclei what actually happen much energy is liberated that fall in the spectrum of x rays so other thing is that the this process of uh, production or formation of bremsstrahlung radiation or production of bremsstrahlung radiation is uh, increased with the atomic number so what is meant by increasing the atomic number if the atomic number increase it should mean your mind the number of neutron uh, electron and outer orbital will also be increased because atomic number increase mean the number of proton you actually going to increase inside the nucleus if number of proton increases inside the nucleus so the number of uh, electron also increase out in outer orbitals so if there are greater outer orbital uh, electron so there is most probable probability to reduce to effect to imply the columbic force over the emitted electron so in this regard it will decelerate it and as a deceleration process is with emit the radiation with a great amount of energy so that is the uh, bremsstrahlung x rays emission that will fall in the x ray spectrum so this is uh, associated with the increased atomic number of the medium in tungsten for example a 10 mega electron uh, loss about 50% of its energy by bremsstrahlung okay if an electron having energy 10 mega electron volt in tungsten element there are about 50% of its energy like that 5 mega electron volt will be uh, emitted uh, through deceleration process of uh, surrounding nuclei atomic nuclei and the form uh, in the form of bremsstrahlung radiation whereas a 100 mega electron volt loses more than 90% of its energy by this process so by increasing the energy of the electron so probability of uh, a formation of bremsstrahlung radiation increase very rapidly so this was the reason that why because it should mean your mind greater the energy greater will be the effect of columbic force so you know uh, columbic force uh, is equal to k naught q1 q point charge 1 into point charge 2 divided by r square 
so as it is passes through the um, external medium so the distance between uh, if there are more and more electron around the orbital so this will ensure the reduction in distance between the electron so reduction in distance between the electron with the greater amount of because its energy is if 100 mega electron volt so force of repulsion will be much much greater so deceleration process also very very uh, high in this uh, medium and as a result of this deceleration process a greater amount of energy will be emitted in the form of grim starling x rays emission okay so have a look over uh, uh, decay process scheme of iodine iodine actually having a half life of 8 days it undergo beta decay process in uh, and three different kind of beta radiation emitted uh, in the decay process of iodine one is uh, a 723 kilo electron volt and other is a 637 kilo electron volt and other is 364 uh, kilo electron volt and this is uh, about 90.4 percent after this process when it comes still it is uh, 364 kilo electron volt above the ground level so this is a ground level which actually at zero level okay i come this is a zero mega electron volt kilo electron volt okay so at this process iodine have to come here in order to stabilize but uh, after the beta decay it is this emission is 1.6 it is much much at higher excited state because the difference of this is much much greater so this is about 637 so always more than 90 percent of iodine atoms trying to appear at its lowest uh, uh, at a stable state a higher stable state and lowest uh, potential energy state and due to this is it is a 360 4 kilo electron volt from ground state so after when this state is formed and uh, maximum of the iodine atoms uh, converted into this uh, form so from this form to this form they unliberate gamma radiation so this is gamma radiation this gamma radiation by x liberation of this gamma radiation and now the new nucleoid xenon is appear to be stable so this is uh, the decay process of iodine if we see another decay process so these are the x-rays okay this is molybdenum this is very important nucleide actually this uh, nucleide uh, uh, formed as a result of uh, fission process of uh, uranium in the atomic reactor like that uh, iodine and other so this is also beta meter as a beta decay process it uh, uh, decay into technetium and further this technetium uh, which is uh, appear as a meta stable go on to uh, decay process isometric decay process and to become uh, technetium 99 which is uh, highly stable having a long half life so come to the point and uh, this is a molybdenum of uh, 42 and molecular atomic mass is 99 having its uh, half life 65.9 hours so this is the ground state at which uh, its uh, uh, energy is uh, likely to zero kilo electron volt this is a ground state but from this ground state this is excited state of a uh, technetium after emission of beta radiation now it is a technetium this is also technetium this is also technetium one 16.4 percent formation of technetium with the highly excited state so 1.1 percent technetium is formed by the emission of beta from molybdenum uh, with the excited state of potential, potential energy 500.0.1 kilo electron volt and 81.8 percent molybdenum converted into technetium having a excited state uh, or potential energy about 142.7 kilo electron volt okay this is with the greater uh, uh, probability to form in it when this formed so all the other excited state come to this excited state so this process that is 140.5 kilo electron volt and the excited state that appear to be 
by the 81.8 molybdenum atom into technetium that is 142.7 kilo electron volt also um, be excited by the emission of uh, energy about 2.2 kilo electron volt this is very small photon you can have this is a 2.2 kilo electron volt photon of energy liberated by 99 percent of the excited new uh, technetium atom into uh, 140.5 uh, kilo electron volt potential energy for a technetium atom now these technetium atom uh, liberate this amount of energy that is a uh, 140.5 kilo electron volt and appear to 99 technetium this state is very important okay this state is very important the technetium atom which is found by the emission of a beta particle okay when molybdenum actually emit beta radiation about 81.8 percent technetium so at this state technetium spent 6.01 hour half life so this state because it is a uh, very uh, reasonable time at which it uh, remains stay in its disposition so this state is called metastable metastable uh, mean not a stable state but uh, above this stable it uh, spend most of its time and due to this reason it is called metastable state so this uh, state is very important uh, about this uh, in uh, the field of uh, radio pharmaceutical because this nucleide is uh, about 85 percent radio pharmaceuticals which are actually used for the diagnosis of uh, cancer diagnosis of infection inside the body are deep sighted infections which are unable to detect it by other kind of uh, di diagnostic instruments or uh, strategies in medical field it have ability to diagnose such type of uh, uh, abnormalities inside the molecule inside the sorry body uh, by the tagging with some radio uh, biomolecules due to its uh, much important and uh, affordable half life so after emission of uh, uh, this photon of energy it undergo uh, further uh, formation of uh, technetium that spent about uh, 2.111 into 10 to 5 years Further, after spontaneous, uh, uh, spontaneously it uh, undergo beta radiation emission and rhodinium is formed, which is a stable and no more decay process carried out by this one. So, have a look over uh, this uh, important uh, figure that represent the effect of uh, beta radiation as well as alpha radiation. Alpha radiation have ability to destroy very rapidly the DNA strand and Beta radiation have uh, less ability to uh, destroy the DNA strand. It is double. So due to this reason, alpha particles are more important in uh, uh, therapy, therapy of cancer through nuclear medicine field uh, as compared to beta particle. However, beta particle are also very important. It also destroys the DNA strand, but uh, in with less frequency as as compared to the alpha particle. So if have a look over this. This is uh, uh, actinium, which is uh, used for the prostate uh, specific membrane antigen, uh, and just uh, to label actinium with prostate specific membrane antigen for the therapy of uh, uh, prostate cancer that was uh, uh, carried out uh, uh, in nuclear medicine hospital. So by my uh, PhD student, and uh, I am here. So this is the uh, application of actinium in nuclear medicine field which actually it liberates alpha particle these alpha particle which it liberates destroy the prostate cancer cells other important is that uh, there is a uh, lutetium it is a beta meter so this beta meter nucleide when labeled with the uh, gas peptides so there are so many different kind of biomolecule that uh, one can use in order to uh, treat the cancers so this is a uh, lutetium which is beta meter it is uh, a good agent for the uh, neuroendocrine uh, for the destruction of dna dna either belong to any kind of uh, cancer not uh, 
specific to neuroendocrine cancer but neuroendocrine cancer depends on the what type of molecule actually you are labeled with radionuclide uh, nucleate because that is the biomolecule that actually the main vector vehicle to take the uh, nucleides radionuclide at the site of uh, uh, cancer cells if there is a uh, prostate cancer specific membrane we attach so that uh, antigen will take this radionuclide to the site of a prostate cancer if i uh, label it with mini gaston peptide so this mini gaston peptide will take the lutetium toward the neuroendocrine tumor so this is a lot of research carried out in the field of uh, radio pharmaceutical or nuclear medicine using the nucleide by using their effect of uh, uh, beta radiation as well as the alpha particle emissions. So the third kind of decay process is positron or positron decay process. This is uh, a nuclei that are neutron deficient or proton rich. So if we see about uh, uh, the fact that there are two kinds of uh, 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 nucleide in the nucleide graph one is below and other is above the uh, uh, stable nucleides so which are above the stable nucleide actually that are uh, that are the proton in rich less in neutron number so these are with the light green color these are proton in rich so due to this reason if we see all these uh, neutron number remains same but uh, this is going to increase the proton number as we go up proton number going to increase okay so due to this reason all these are rich in proton number which actually required for the uh, uh, stable ratio between proton and neutron due to uh, beyond this ratio the proton number going to increase in order to destabilize the nucleide so in this regard proton will be dis disintegrated so by disintegration of proton which actually happen neutron is produced along with the beta positive so there should be a beta positive uh, sorry we have to write here beta positive okay. so this is a beta positive or positron uh, along with the neutrino so uh, when we actually disintegrated the uh, uh, neutron into proton and beta emission that there would be anti neutrino if there is a production of neutron from the proton that would be neutrino this is also a, a carry the energy difference of the nuclear parent and the daughter nucleides okay at the end of the path after positron particle emission the daughter nucleide has an atomic number that is one less you yes because proton is actually going to disintegrate proton going to disappear so one proton disappearing of one proton mean uh, there is atomic number one less in the daughter nucleate as compared to in the parent nucleate so at the end of the path of the positron positron particle positron combined with electrons in the outer shell of the nucleates are thus annihilated each event giving a rise to two photons of uh, 511 kilo, kilo electron volt that are emitted in opposite direction these photons are referred to as annihilation radiations so these photon of energy also play a very important role in nuclear medicine so in positron decay a proton transfers into a neutrin neutron by emitting a positron particle and a neutrino for example this is an example of this okay so come to the decay equation this is a parent nuclei this is a daughter nuclei in because one proton is going to disintegrate so this is a disappearance and a decrease in one proton in the data nuclei so in this along with the positron emission this is energy difference that is also known as a neutrino so example of this case uh, positron emission is fluorine fluorine 18 when undergo a neutri a positron decay process a new element is formed that is oxygen 8 uh, with the oxygen 18 atomic mass positron is formed along with neutrino okay this is another example that is uh, uh, associated with the formation of uh, a positron decay process and uh, what happened actually when uh, this positron when uh, emitted from the nucleus and uh, enter into the outer environment of the uh, 
nucleus that is a uh, electronic environment in the orbitals so when these are uh, a uh, positron come into contact because there is you should know there is a positive charge and uh, around the nucleus there is a negative charge electron so columbic attractive forces play very important a uh, role in um, collision between inhalation of the positron because when this positron and um, passes through the electronic environment as in case of beta radiation emission there is a deceleration process so deceleration process actually what uh, produce what result in the formation of a bram starling radiation by the deceleration because there is a repulsive forces between the electron as well as the beta particle but in case of uh, this process if we see here there are positron actually that emitted from the nucleus and enter into the outer uh, nuclear environment atomic nuclear environment so there would be a uh, Uh, attraction between uh, outer electron as uh, as well as between the positron so in order to get maximum kinetic energy increase due to this uh, potential uh, of uh, attraction and uh, annihilation of this particle resulted in the formation two photons these photon actually are with the gamma radiation these are exactly 180 angle they are also at present at 180 angle okay exactly opposite so having energy of 511 kilo electron volt so this is uh, uh, these photons are very important in uh, nuclear medicine uh, and diagnostic process in a particular imaging process that is known as pet that is known as pet positron emission tomography so these photons are used in pet camera for the detection of uh, uh, tumor cells with the three dimension uh, frame of references so in this regard this give very exact area of the tumor cell uh, also the volume of the tumor cell and uh, this burden of the cells as also there inside the body so it is much much important uh, technique by using positron decay processes so these nuclei uh, basically most of the some, with smaller nuclei these are actually what actually uh, carried out uh, activated with the help of uh, uh, protons in cyclotron so these protons which uh, actually activate uh, uh, are uh, activate the nucleus of an element again and uh, and that's proton that now we have added into the nucleus of an element disintegrated again we come to the uh, original nucleus and by the emission of a two photon so in this regard this uh, decay process is very important uh, with respect to the uh, medical field so there are so many examples uh, so what actually happened it is very important uh, we uh, can come to the uh, point that uh, there is uh, a particular energy difference between uh, the parent and uh, the daughter nucleus so most it was seen that uh, the difference of energy between uh, your parent molecule nucleus and the daughter nucleus is more than 1.0 mega electron volt so there is uh, a difference it is in more cases in more cases in which uh, positron emission take place the energy difference between the parent and daughter nucleus was noted 1.02 mega electron volt therefore in beta decay a mass equivalent of two electron are uh, created by the conversion of a proton to a neutron that is 1.02 mega electron volt is needed to create these two particles so positron emission take place only when energy difference between the parent and daughter nucleus is equal to or greater than 1.0 2 mega electron volt some example of a positron decay process are like that so decay scheme of fluorine is uh, presented in figure 3 okay this is a fluorine as you have seen in previous example this is a fluorine that converted into oxygen 18 and by the emission of positron so this is the process where this actually happened more than 97% of the fluorine and nucleide and undergo beta positive process and 3% with electron capturing process so this is an alternate this is another alternate process because it should be no there are two ways 
uh, one thing you should know like that one thing this is a proton rich okay what actually happen neutron is formed along with positron okay so this is one way proton disintegrate into per neutron and positron other way possibility is other is like this proton capture an electron from nearest outermost orbital like that k orbital or l orbital so it will undergo the formation of a neutron but in this case there is no positron emission okay no positron emission there is only the emission of neutron formation of a neutron so these are the alternate process and what actually the happen if energy difference between parent and the nuclei is greater than or equal to 1.02 mega electron volt then it would be the positron emission process decay process but if the energy less than 1.02 mega electron volt so most probably not definitely most probably the process will decay through the electron capturing process okay come to the next point electron capturing process when a nucleus has a smaller n over z ratio compared to the stable nucleus as an alternate to beta positron decay it may under also decay by the so called electron cap capturing process in which an electron is captured from the extra nuclear electron shell thus transferring a proton into a neutron and emitting a neutrino for this process to occur the energy difference between the parent and daughter nuclei is usually but not necessarily less than 1.02 mega electron volt so nucleides having an energy difference greater than 1.02 mega electron volt may also decay by electron capture the electron atomic number of the parent is reduced by 1 in this process because one electron is uh, carried captured by one proton so one proton disappeared into the form of a neutron so atomic number reduced by one unit some example of electron capturing process are as gallium one capture one electron it undergo to form zinc because you now the atomic number is reduced by one unit similarly indium um, having a 49 atomic number when capture one electron it and form cadmium 48 and cobalt 27 undergo capturing electron process and give iron so this is uh, the decay equation of uh, this and the when this electron is captured by an uh, and nucleide so in that nucleide there is a minus 1 proton number so this is an, an example carbon 11 undergo electron capturing process and form the boron so what is the consequences of this if it uh, actually capture the electron from the outer orbital like that from k shell so then what will happen inside the nucleus uh, you studied sorry inside the nucleus you studied uh, the proton was uh, converted into a neutron okay this is the inside the nucleus change inside the nucleus but what what actually happening outside the nucleus there is another series of changes because you know one electron we can see has no been created in the k shell when one electron capacity the can see was created inside inside the k shell then what will you think it remained as such no answer is very simple no what will happen actually the electron from the outer shells like that k l shells from m shells they will sh rush to occupy the position at in the k shell so at what cost without spending energy without involving the energy or just by involving the energy yes it is another answer when an electron jump from higher orbital to lower orbital it will emit the energy so definitely if they jump from l shell to k shell definitely the difference of the energy will be liberated so we also have studied if there is a, a movement of electron from higher orbital to k shell or l shell or m shell even so there is a characteristic radiation emit that is called x rays so if the electron comes from higher orbital to k shell so the x radiation are known as k x radiation 
k x radiation if the electron comes from a higher orbital to l orbital then it is known as l x radiation so the process and other continuous process carry uh, take place outside the uh, nucleus of an atom where uh, nuclear change was uh, carried out so usually the k-shell electron are captured because of their proximity to the nucleus the process is then called k capture process thus in l capture and l shell electron is captured and so on the vacancy created in the k shell after electron capture is filled by the transition of electron from an at upper level Prob probably the l shell and uh, possibly the m or n shell the difference in energy of the electron shell will appear as an x rays that is characteristic of the daughter nucleus these x rays are termed characteristic x rays k x rays l x rays and so on belonging to the daughter nuclei the probability of electron capture increases with increasing atomic number because electron shells in these nuclei are closer to the nucleus the decay scheme of indium is given in figure 4 okay so this is a decay scheme of indium which actually undergo through electron capturing process so it should be in your mind this uh, when it uh, uh, capture the electron inside the nucleus so it 99 percent in this uh, nucleoid electron capturing process carry take place and comes here and at this position when a proton converted into a neutron so now the new neutron have to move its original position in order to move its original position uh, inside the nucleus it also emits the radiation these are called gamma radiation so there are two step uh, process in which it move from uh, original position to its uh, uh, so in its uh, uh, newly formed position to original position to become a stable nuclei so in two ways in two adopted two routes to go there at its uh, stable position by emitting two type of photons of gamma radiation one is 171 kilo electron volt photon and other is 245 kilo electron volt photon so 90 percent 90 percent uh, rays are 99 respective so 90 percent 171 kilo electron volt photon is emitted and 94 percent 275 kilo electron volt potential is found so in this regard if we see this photon which is likely to decreasium photon which is actually one uh, uh, likely to 140 uh, 140 kilo electron volt photon is emitted and here it uh, emit actually 171 kilo electron volt photon is emitted both photons are very very important also in the diagnostic procedure of nuclear medicine so indium is also uh, used in place of uh, uh, technetium to label uh, most of the uh, biomolecule in order to diagnose the uh, diseases inside the body okay so dear students up to now uh, we finish our today lecture at this point and we will inshallah in next lecture we will study the isomeric transition which is also another decay process of uh, uh, unstable radio nucleide allah office